at Kensington Metro Park Nature Center. Welcome to Science at the Metro Parks, where we do short and easy science experiments that you can do in your own home with things you find around the house or in your pantry. Today on Science with the Metro Parks, we have a special guest, and he's going to teach us how to make a model of minerals that make up rocks. Let's go ahead and bring him in. Good day, everybody. I'm here to show you how to make a model, and we can actually eat it when we're done, a model of minerals that make up rocks. But first, a few things you need to know about rocks and minerals. I have some minerals here, and I have a couple of rocks. You can tell they might look a little different. I have four different minerals. Here's quartz, salt, pyrite, and sulfur. Now, one of the things that will help you understand the difference between minerals and rocks, if I took this hammer and I was to take this salt and I was to hit it with a hammer, I would have smaller pieces of salt. No matter what I do, I can hit it, hit it, hit it. What am I going to get? Smaller pieces of salt. If I took this piece of granite and I hit it with a rock, I could break it up into separate minerals. It might be easier to see. On this one, this pudding stone, you can see the different chunks of minerals in there. So I would be able to break these up. So that's the difference between the rock and the mineral. So the mineral, if we were to hit this and hit it and hit it and hit it as small as we possibly could, what we would get would be atoms that make up the molecules of salt. And salt, for example, is called sodium chloride. It's a mixture of sodium and chloride. So we'd be able to break it up into those two atoms. Now, we're going to make a model of sodium chloride. In order to do this, you're going to need a table, protective tablecloth, some paper plates, toothpicks, and something that you can stick the toothpicks into, something soft. I'm going to use gumdrops, but you could also use some jelly beans or some marshmallows, as long as they're all different colors. So, first, we take a plate and we take some gumdrops. You're going to need, for one of your models, 12 toothpicks and four and four different colored gumdrops or marshmallows or jelly beans. I'm going to use yellow and green. These are going to represent our atoms and our atoms are going to be bonded together. The toothpicks represent the chemical bonds that hold our atoms together. So we're going to take one atom and a different colored atom. Oh, look like that. They are bonded together right there before your eyes. Now we're going to repeat that process three more times. Be careful with the toothpicks. They are a little bit pointy. When you're doing any science experiments, you should always have parental supervision just to make sure you don't poke yourself with a toothpick. There we go. And you can see I've made four chemically bonded molecules. Now we're going to build them together into a structure. Here we go. So I'm adding, taking one of my toothpicks with the gumdrops on it and putting in two more toothpicks. Then I'm going to take another pair and stick them onto the toothpicks. But this is important. We want our colors to be adjoined opposite. So you see I have green to yellow and yellow to green. Now, with our other pair, we're going to repeat the process. Do the exact same thing one more time. And when you're done, you'll have two squares. Now, we're going to bond these together. So I'm going to take one of my squares and put the toothpicks into it so they are standing straight up. Then I take the other square and I put it on top. So I'm going to make a cube. And again, I'm going to put green to yellow, yellow to green. Those are the colors I chose, but you could use any colors. There we go. Here is a model, atomic model of a mineral. Hmm.
looks kind of cubic, just like this one, doesn't it? I wonder why. Now, there's one mineral. We're gonna repeat the process and make a couple more minerals. So, paper plate, 12 toothpicks. This time I'm going to use orange and red. And you can change the colors. You can use any colors you would like. Here we go. So, toothpick with an orange and a red. Toothpick with an orange and a red gumdrop. Again. And one more. So I've chemically bonded these atoms together. And just like before, I'm going to make a square. I'm going to add some more toothpicks. And I want to keep the colors opposite. So red to orange, orange to red. There we go. And again, the same process with my other two. So when I'm done, and once again, I will have two squares with the orange and the red gumdrops. And once again, add some more toothpicks. Attach all of my atoms together. And what have I made? Another model of a mineral. Time for one more. So again, by now you should probably have this down. A paper plate, 12 toothpicks, different colored gumdrops. This time I'm going to use purple and white. So a purple gumdrop, a white gumdrop bonded together. Purple and white white and purple just to change things around white and purple and again i'm going to make squares like i did before and i want to adjoin white to purple and purple to white there's one of my squares here's my next square so, two squares, and just like before, we're going to make a cube. Toothpicks sticking up. Attach our gumdrop to the toothpicks. And there again, I have a cube. So, now if we take a look, we have three different models of three different minerals. Here's the amazing part. If I take these three models, put them together on one plate, what do I have? Three models hooked together, it's a rock. Great Scott, would you look at that? Now, here's the fun part. You can remove your chemical bonds and you can eat your atoms if you would like or not, it is up to you. Make sure you don't eat the toothpicks, for eating the toothpicks will upset, upset the time-space continuum, and we don't want that, Marty, whatever we do. So, now it's time to clean up. Always clean up your science experiments when you're done. Thank you for watching Science with the Metro Parks. Remember to like and subscribe.